girl Just Jack. You're tuning in to Just With The Press interviews. Before I introduce my special guest, I want you guys to do me a huge favor. Go on, like, and subscribe to my channel. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you and much, much love to you guys. Um, my special guest beside me is a very interesting woman. She is a <laughs> multi-talented woman. She can legit do it all and does it all. She is involved with her community, a humanitarian. How do you know that? Because I seen it on the other <laughs> And you tell me. Um, she, uh, she hoops. She model. She does photography. She's an artist. She can cook. She legit does it all, you guys. Her name is Michaela Vaughn. She goes by Mickey. Oh, Mickey, you're so fun. You're so fun. You blew my mind. Hey, Mickey. <laughs> all right. Thank uh, you for that great introduction. No problem. All right. I know you're from Philly. Can you tell me what part of Philly are you from? West Philly. West Philly, like, I know that. I don't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, Will Smith. Uh-huh. That's okay. Which is so... I wouldn't even ever use that. I guess people know where Will Smith was on. West Philadelphia. Boy. I knew it. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. So, All right. West Philly area, but now we, like, live... There's City Line, mm -hmm. and we're on the other side of City Line, which separates, like the suburbs from the city technically yeah so like we're just like right on the other side of it okay so. uh, okay okay so um being from um philly you mentioned will smith there's a lot of other famous people such as little lizzie bird no. your favorite Pat yes <laughs> <laughs> patty lavelle yeah. a lot of philly talent <laughs> yes um how is that how is that does that influence you anyway knowing that you have like people coming like people have made it from my city does that influence you anyway anything that you do for such as basketball or anything that you I don't know. go towards i think like it's nice to be in a city that has so much history mm -hmm. and it's interesting because it's like a lot of the history of the u.s has come from philly yeah so i don't know there's inspiration all around for sure mm, okay okay um what's your favorite thing about being from philly mm, i don't know okay <laughs> i don't know i don't think anyone has ever asked me that before okay if i was to... good that's good i don't even know what to say <laughs> okay also you play basketball um who would you say influenced you um to play basketball I don't know, I guess, I would say, like, I don't even know if it, I, it could have been any sport, uh -huh. but I think okay. just in terms of like playing a sport, my family, my dad, yeah, my brother, uh, I mean, my dad played, you know my dad, you talk yeah. about this, um, he played football at Penn, he was the first black quarterback, yes. and major right there so that's the reason that i have the same number he had 17 so i'm 17. okay but i couldn't be that in college because you know that weird rule where it's like they can't do like two hands or whatever yeah because they mess the numbers up so you go pro you can do whatever number you want so i want you to 17 which is nice okay that's yeah. what's up. all right so with um your dad uh being a, a, a uh, with your dad being a great athlete and making um history and stuff did that like growing up did that like give you like a bigger shoes to fill or like inspire you more to want to do the sports i know you, you're not playing football or something but you're still doing that you still being an athlete still yeah that inspire i don't you know more? i don't even know if i was like i always feel like i kind of just fell into it yeah like I played soccer, I played lacrosse, I played basketball, I played did it softball. <laughs> well, I just like to play sports. Yeah. So okay. I just like, I prefer to play them than I do watching them. Yeah. So, okay. um, I don't know. I just, I kind of did that. And then when I got to the point where I was playing basketball more seriously, then it was kind of like, this is, a, this is what you do next, this is what you do next, okay. this is what you do next. Right. And so I feel like I kind of just like fell into it I didn't know what I was getting myself into like going to college play basketball okay. or like I never thought about playing basketball in college or really professionally no so where, where the passion you love it though right yeah I mean but I love I love just like playing sports so yeah. like, it could have been any sport I feel like I would have been like, which really everyone used us the best well and like made like the well best I really like the cross too yeah I know you I won really, like a, um, a championship in your freshman year in high school I really so did you search me up <laughs> Okay, you made it seem like you, well, I mean, you made it seem like you were prepared for the interview. <laughs> a little bit prepared, okay. maybe. Well, well, I got this okay. reset, girl. Okay, that's so funny. <laughs> that's so funny. Well, yeah, so, I really love lacrosse, but, um, I love basketball, too. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I think I put the most effort into it. Yeah. So I don't know I feel like I, I could have played soccer if I wanted to. Yeah. But I didn't put as much into it. Yeah. So and I think I was just naturally it made more sense to have asked about, like, oh you're tall like why not? No, I was like okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Like okay. And I liked it and I like it so. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. So you're youngest out of um four other with four other siblings. Mm -hmm. How was that growing up? Was like, what did your other siblings play sports as well? Was it competitive? You know, being a baby, you always probably get like, um, she uh, gets everything they want, or you like last to get everything. Like, how yeah. was that being the youngest growing up? Um, being the youngest, I always and I still feel like I get treated like the baby. Yeah for everything, and I'm also, I mean, there's my brother who we grew up with the most, and so it's like different boy-girl dynamics, and mm -hmm. those kind of double standards. So that plays into it. But I felt like all of us, my brother and I, we played some sports together, we played soccer sometimes together, and I played with him and his friends, and she was yeah. always really good about letting me play with his friends. Um, but for the most part, I feel like all of us, we're also kind of spaced out in age. My brother and I were the closest in age, we're uh -huh. three years apart, and- They look exactly like- <laughs> So we're like, so we probably would have the most competitiveness, uh -huh. um, but we both do different things. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, it was that when we were a kid maybe, Yeah. but now it's just like okay. we're on two different paths. So Okay, growing up or whatever, when or now, one on one, which one of your siblings will give you the most competition? Um, none of them. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. Everyone is my brother, but I never. I I hate people. Like, oh, like who? Because we've never Same like got on a real court. They want to play on these bum ass courts, uh -huh. and they want to do this. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like, you can switch your own ankle, and that could be fine. <laughs> but I can't do that off the clock. So. Yeah. Okay. Like, if you wanted to suit up, okay, let's suit up. But even still, none of them. None of them. Okay, they're gonna see this. <laughs> Period. <laughs> All right, you went to uh, two different high schools. Uh, one of them was it um, Friends? Mm -hmm. um, Friends Central. And then you went to a uh, Catholic school as well. Both of those schools was predominantly white, were they? Yeah. Um, how was it growing? I mean, how was it going to a predominantly white school? Like, did you ever feel out of place or yeah. anything like that? How was it? I definitely did feel out of place a lot growing up. I mean, because so the Friends Central school, I'd been there since I was in the first grade, so mm -hmm. I was at. Was it like 10 years I was there? Uh -huh. So, I mean, when I got to the second school, it was, I was accustomed to being around predominantly white people, but I think I was less, because Paul at six was in Virginia, and there were a lot of racists down there. Uh -huh. So I think that was a bit of a culture shift, and like it being a Catholic school, because yeah. my, like, the other school, the Quaker school, was more liberal, I would say. Yeah. So, um, but in terms of fitting in, I think I was always just like, the standard or what I thought people would like was wow. certain height white girl yeah. with whatever kind of thing because that's what all the guys at our school liked and yeah. that's just you know you could see the difference how you got treated and how people talk to you and how their mm. parents you know different things like that yeah so um I think that was kind of difficult too and then trying to figure out where you fit in all that yeah and if you do it all, and then who doesn't fit in that with you, and if you even like people, you know what I mean? Like, then you mm. would just kind of get group with the black kids, and it's like, what if you don't like that black kid? He's weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which, yeah. there were a lot of weird black kids. Yeah. And so, yeah. And Notre Dame was probably white, too, so. Okay. I mean, at that point, I was just accustomed it's, to it. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, is that after, what the, is? <laughs> after the first year, you kind of were like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, alright. So, uh, both of those schools have really good um, basketball programs, though. Like, uh, you won back to back, uh, nas not national, you won back to back championships at uh, the Central School, the Free yeah, Central did, School. Yeah. And then at your That was school. good, though. We really, really fought for that, too. Yeah. Like, we weren't, like, we were a GOAT. Like, that was the first time that we had won in a long time, and we had, like, mm. taken down. Damn, we got one back to back? Yeah. Damn, that's what's up when Mickey got there. Okay. <laughs> How was it playing for a Hall of Fame coach at Notre Dame? How was the experience like you playing with like um, good upperclassmen and all that? How was that like experience from transition from high school to all of that? Um, it was tough, but yeah, I think I was well equipped for the transition. Yeah, um, and I think it was. I think it's just tough in general to move from 
high school to college and then whatever college you go to and adjusting to the college dynamics uh -huh. in general and then your specific college dynamics and then you juggle that with being an athlete and you figure out your team dynamics yeah. and then you figure out your team dynamics how that changes each year and where you fit into that so um i think there can be a lot of change and that can be maybe the toughest thing to deal with yeah. and trying to figure out what you really know and what you have to kind oh. of figure out yeah um but definitely experience i wouldn't trade yeah okay what was the atmosphere there like in notre dame yeah in notre dame um very big sports school so it was nice that like people were always supporting the sports okay That's which is cool okay um and it was a tight-knit community i would say oh. which i guess pros and cons to like knowing everyone yeah but um then you find out that you go to senior year and you meet people that you never knew in the first place so yeah. it's how tight knit is it really you know mm -hmm. you can yeah. always find someone new to hang out with okay so you was um invited to uh minnesota training camp can you tell me about that experience it was really good yeah yeah i had a good time it was um definitely super tough but it was good to work out with a bunch of talented hard-working individuals and I definitely saw them on a mission to win on the goal. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, okay. Um, you was there with uh, Sylvia uh, Fowles. How was that? Like, how I was love that Sylvia Fowles. <laughs> Did you um get any like advice That's from her to help you for real? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Sylvia. Shout out to Sylvia. We, I love you so. <laughs> Did you get like any advice or something like? I would say we're you? close. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's that's <laughs> that cool. is cool because she's so dope. She's like a goat player. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Which is like casual that she's just like a really, 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 really good player. But also, when I think about WNBA, I feel like that's one of the names I would think of. Yeah. Okay. Would you say like she's one of like, like do you have a favorite WNBA current WNBA player or anything so, like that? Oh, I was like, okay. Yeah, okay, okay cool. So, okay, I put to that. Um, but I just think it's interesting because like you think of inaugural players like mm -hmm. Don Staley and Cynthia mm -hmm. Cooper Dyke and you like go back to the originals but I feel like when I was growing up I think of more like Maya Moore, Sylvia, yeah. Yeah, Candace, um, Candace yeah. Sue, Sue, Diana, things like that. Yeah. So um, that's interesting too like meeting people that you kind of heard of. Yeah. Okay. Okay, all right. So you're currently playing basketball in Italy for um, Costa Bismaga, and you're averaging 15 points per game, nine rebounds. Um, really? Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Your first game, you had 13 rebounds and I believe like 18 points. Like, how has how has that been? That transition and stuff. Like, um, again, coming from college, not a lot of games and stuff with injuries and stuff. Like, but you coming here. It's like you're proving a point, like, I am, like, I am really good, like, I can contribute and all that stuff. Like, how has that, like, been for you? Like, how have that you been feeling with that? Um, I think it's been good. It's definitely been an adjustment. Mm -hmm. Um, just playing more. I don't know, just the atmosphere here that the coaches, like, believe in you and they... Yeah. Which is different because in professions, like, they pay you to do these things that they know that you can do. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming from a place where it was kind of, like, things that I was told not to do or things that I, yeah, like, didn't think I could do. Yeah. Okay, I do remember you just said that Notre Dame was like, they kind of didn't want you to shoot or do their thing, but like, I know Coach Paolo, he'd be like, shoot it, like, um, trying to get you working your threes and stuff like yeah. that, so that's really good. So I think it's just been a change in, like, knowing and, like, deep, sorry, deep programming kind of, of like, okay, you can do these things, you need uh -huh. to look to score, you need to look to, okay. you know, that's things like up. that. So I think it's been more of, like, a mental uh -huh. shift than anything. Yeah. Um... I would feel like the strength is pretty comparable to college, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe the WNBA is, like, quicker. Yeah. But I wonder if it's also maybe, like, the team that we're on. Or, like, mm -hmm. I have no idea. Or, like, the sense. league you play in. Or, yeah. I have no idea. Okay. So, but otherwise, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty... Obviously, you need to be getting stronger and all that kind of stuff can always be in better shape yeah. and faster. So, but... Otherwise, I think it's going well so far. Okay, me too. <laughs> <laughs> For your rookie season, good shit. Thank good, you. A good league. You're doing pretty good, man. No cap. Thanks. Um, all right. So, how how has the um has it been a culture shock um from you know from the states and then coming down here to a whole another uh, country? It's like a, a no, to me, it's like a whole another world. Like how how has that been? Like you adjusting to being in a different a foreign country and uh, on your own a lot of three thousand plus miles away from home and stuff. How has that been? 
It's been an adjustment for sure, and I don't think I gave myself enough credit for how much of an adjustment it would be when I was at home. Uh -huh. But I also didn't really know what it was going to be like, so I didn't want to have any misconceptions about it, because yeah. I knew that I was going to be here for a long time, and it's not a vacation, so I didn't want to just burn <laughs> out on, like, yeah. let's do, you know, this, this, and this, kind of just coming here, getting to lay the land, and figuring out how things were going to be. Uh -huh. um, and making a life around that kind of yeah because this is where you are for nine months out of the year <laughs> eight months out of the year yeah so i don't know i think i'm still maybe it's just me but i'm still thinking like this is what my life is going to be like for the next mm -hmm. however many years yeah. this is what i'm going to be doing what does that look like and yeah. what does this first year look like and okay so i think i'm still figuring it out okay. but um I think it can definitely be kind of isolating, not really being in like maybe like a bigger city yeah. or um, even having things more in our town. Yeah. But we are in a ghost town. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of a ghost town there, which is so weird because like there are things. Yeah. But it's not like. Oh. I don't know. Even like South Bend. Mm hmm. Well. I wouldn't want to go back there. Forget South Bend! <laughs> I didn't know my girl right up there, no. <laughs> no, I was trying to think, where, and that, that could also, well, there was like stuff in a row on streets, mm -hmm. and you could like, go there if you wanted. Yeah. You know, I feel like there's... Really not nothing here. You would really like to go. It's not. <laughs> it's not at all. So okay. I feel like maybe that's the thing that I'm not quite used to. Uh-huh. I'm also not used to having, like, this is many roommates. This is the most roommates I've ever had. Yeah. I'm her favorite roommate, by the way. <laughs> Probably not. I don't have a favorite roommate. <laughs> if she did, it would be just, you know what I'm saying? But if I had a favorite roommate, <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. All right. What do you like about Italy? <laughs> the culture, the language. Um, the scenery, mm -hmm. food's pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't really eat out much, but the food I make is pretty good, and the majority of the food that I've had has been pretty good. Um, I feel like I could, like, go more places to eat. Yeah. But, like, where? More uh, pizza? You know, I've been to a whole lot of um, sushi places, so. I was going to say, I've had the most sushi I've ever had in my entire life here, which is weird because why have I not? I mean, I guess I've also had the most pasta, but I've cooked it. Yeah. Hmm. It's like you're eating a whole nother, you're in a foreign country, but you're eating a whole nother foreign dish and stuff, so it's like, you get to, like the weirdness. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Uh, what is on your bucket list to do while you're here? In Italy. Bucket list? Mm -hmm. Like what do you want to do? See? Whatever. I don't know. I want to... I want to create more art while I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, she is a really good artist. How do you know? I see your work. Where do you been? <laughs> she does that. Like I just haven't seen her shit. <laughs> no, I just want to be able to like... <laughs> And not like not Italy inspired art, but I want to be able to have like this is what I did while I was in Italy and like a little collage or something. Maybe no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So like, I have no idea. Okay. But I think maybe just things like oh I did that in Italy. This is like my not I don't even know. So maybe Memorable it's like moments. things. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I have to figure out a way that I'm gonna finish the rest you of got this. It. Thanks. Um, <laughs> My host brought me something to drink. <laughs> oh my glass, god! I wish it were a glass of wine. Yes. You know when I drank that yesterday? I did see, <sighs> yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> okay. What are some individual goals? What are some individual goals you have for yourself this season? I think to just be more confident in general and be able to not second guess what I do. Yeah. And not second guess my abilities based on a good game or a bad game yeah. and be able to kind of stay steady in my faith in myself and yeah. my faith in my skills and my okay. faith in the practice that I put in. Uh -huh. 
Um, and what else? I I want to. I would say average a double double. Mm -hmm. I like that. Why not? How do you um recover like from a loss or something? What are some things that you do like to help you get over a game or something? Um, I don't know, man. I just try not. I really try not to think about it. I'm like, you know, we have to just move on, and then I wait for like obviously the coach is gonna say something about it, so I'll wait for the coach to say something. Teammates, we have stuff to say. I might talk to me about it if we're like talking about how the game went, but usually I'm just like, the things that we can learn from the loss. I think we've learned. Okay. Because sometimes I feel like, I mean, usually after games you talk about them, so it's like, Here you know what, right? We've known, <laughs> we've known what's gone wrong, mm -hmm. so it's about being able to focus on how to fix those things yeah. and putting your energy into doing that the next time you have the chance to practice, okay. and then when you play. Mm. Okay. So, because I feel like the more you dwell on a loss, the more you can change it. Facts. I so, need to hear that. Good. I need to hear so that. So I really try not to dwell too back and I just feel shitty right. about it and then it's like I don't think I don't think that mo like feeling shitty about a loss will make me motivated to do better next time. I'll have to be able mm -hmm. to like put that in myself, like feeling good about learning from that. Uh, okay, you know? yeah, there you go. Okay, I like that. Alright, um has there ever been a time you've been discouraged with basketball? Yeah. How did you get out of it? Uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you also do some modeling on, some, on the side. When did you first start modeling? Um. I mean, I did like a little bit when I was a kid. But, yeah. Um. And I guess again, senior year of college. Uh -huh. Kind of got a little something going on. Okay. I want to be able to do it more. I think it will be so cool. All right, so you're in um Milan. You you're close to Milano, which is like a. They don't want design. me. They want. Shut up! I'm serious. <laughs> oh, that's my truth. I'm serious. You gotta be patient, bro. They want. Am I be okay? So then I'm wondering, am I being impatient? Like you can't just. I'm not gonna be like top model. I understand that, but shit. Why not? Not well, not right away is okay. what I mean. So I understand that that's not feasible to think that, but I'm also like. Damn, man. Come on now. Where's the, you got see who you got right here? Well, I don't know. You see, then I'm like, well, they don't know that you're a cool person. They don't know yeah. that you're a good person. But do they even care? Because can you model? There you go. And then I'm like, do I even, do I even want to model? Like, And then I don't want to like think about myself too. like, Because I think I have this eye that goes like this. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason I think I noticed that is not because of modeling. Because of like drawing myself. Mm -hmm. But. Tell her she was a good artist. Then who I'm like. <laughs> Then I'm like, do I even want a model? Is that like what you the message you want to be sending? And I'm like, what message is that? If you work like it's kind of like what the whatever message the brand is sending, it's like yeah. what brands you want to model for and for what? So I don't know. I again I told you I think too much. So I think about all that kind of stuff. So then I don't know. But I mean it's you meet cool people and you get to do some cool things and I think it will be I was like a good model then yeah like not just a model but a good person okay. who models then it would be better than being shitty model you know what yes yes <laughs> more people want to work with you right you're a good you model. Work, exactly you get to endorse cool stuff you get to have a voice and yes so it's gonna be out there make it's in you it's in you thank you thank you the time it's just gotta you know we got chapters of our life so you get you on a blueprint of it right now Mick Yes, you right. are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, you're also behind the lens yourself. Um, what got you into like photography? Like, cause you um did a um uh, you major in that in school as well. What got you into that? I started doing it in high school, and I thought it was really, really cool. Uh -huh. And um, honestly, I think it was. I think I was too scared to like. I mean, I don't think I would have wanted to do a major in drawing or painting, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. But. I think I was too, when I was younger, I was too afraid to like try to draw and get better. I thought it was too hard. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Uh -huh. So I thought I kind of did it as like a fear thing. But I actually really liked it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do film photography. So now I do that. And it's really cool too. Okay. So Ooh. it's interesting. You get to like capture what you see as it is. But then also you kind of get to tell your own story and make your own picture because you're telling a story about what you're not including in the picture. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like you could be lying because you're not 
putting everything into the image. Yeah. Which I, well, I think I read an article about that in one of my first photography classes when I was in college. So it was interesting just to kind of see like the different aspects of photography and that it's not just so cut and dry and easy, mm -hmm. you know? Facts, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you single? Yes. <laughs> I am. You're funny. If again. anybody wants to hit me up, you have to be intelligent, um, emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. I guess that would fall under intelligence. Intelligence of the full spectrum. Here we go. Um, sensitive, communicative, funny, um, witty. Um, <laughs> nice. Caring. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you. I don't know. I've never dated anybody, so I really want to know. Oh, like, I mean, I know what I would want in, like, yeah. in theory. But. Why not? Like, why you don't, oh, like, why you never dated anybody? I don't think I've ever found anyone that I... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this guy's funny. Stop. <laughs> um, why date anybody? No, just because... I don't think I ever like liked anyone enough to date them. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I feel like because I feel like what? Why would you date someone just to say that it's your boyfriend and then it would just be like or your girlfriend? Yeah. And it just I don't know. I feel like it would just be complicated to. I never wanted to. It was never really something that I thought would be beneficial to me. So I didn't partake. Okay. I when I was younger, though, I used to pull and pull and pull and pull. And pull. <laughs> So I, I wanna have plateaued, yeah. Okay. And maybe even gone to the negatives. <laughs> Girl, stop. I actually got a few more questions for you, man. Um, what style shoe you wear? That's actually up for debate at this point because I thought I was women's twelve, but I've been fitting into a lot of elevens recently. Mm -hmm. So I guess it depends on the shoe that I can fit into an 11, yeah. but it seems to be that a lot of the sh I wonder if I like sized up because sometimes again, depending on the shoe, um, if it's like a tight fit 11, I probably couldn't do it. Okay. If it was like a regular 11, I think it would be fine. So women's 12, women's 11, men's 10, men's 10 and a half. Okay. But I hear that fellas. Yeah, that's the shoes. Keep <laughs> right, can you give me your favorite basketball kicks and your non um, basketball kicks you like to wear? Um, I have, I was doing a lot of Under Armour because Notre Dame was Under Armour. Yeah. So I feel like I'll go with Nikes. Okay. To say, because I don't really know. I've always really liked LeBron's for the most part. I have LeBron's now. Mm -hmm. Um, I heard the Kyrie shoe was nice. I love his shoes. I can't wait to try the Hardens I have. Mm -hmm. Are you still having more than yet? They ain't really, uh, she, she be coming out with some, sh oh, she keep her shoes like real nice though. But every time I feel like she has some new <laughs> shoes and I be like, them it, but nah, they don't be it. I'm sad. Well, Damn. I just, cause I still had some of them from college. So I was like, I'll bring those. I'm not going to buy any new pair of yeah. shoes. And I usually it's go hard. through about like two or three pair because after a while, I mean, they run down on the bottom uh -huh. and I slip and I can't wear them anymore. So, and it's actually really good. It's not good to wear, um, old shoes, worn out shoes for um like one for your body but like injury prevention because they're not like oh, safe yeah. to yeah to be in anymore well damn so that was another that like i was always <laughs> for real? But always because well i have a coach at home eric who told me like you're well, not told me but your foot is the first point of contact with everything uh -huh. for your body when you're running and stuff so you want to make sure that that's like stretched out that your foot is strong and secure and has good response because yeah. that'll be important makes for sense. you. Yeah. Well, makes sense. sense exactly. So well, I'm like, sense. I try to wear a shoe for as long as I can, but I'm not about to overdo it. Trying to, you know, especially if I feel, if I can afford another pair of shoes, you know? Yeah. You just didn't burn the monkey? Girl, yes, Wesley, I'm so sorry. You just didn't burn the monkey? <laughs> burn Wesley, I'm so sorry, Wes. God damn Leave it. him alone. <laughs> he was just sitting here. I want him to sit different. Now he don't want to stand up the way he said fuck the shit. Yeah, you just trying to kill him. No, I did not. It's okay. It's okay. All right, Mickey, how tall are you? Um, six, four. Six, four. 192, 193 centimeters. Oh, okay. How, um, how tall are you? I'm 6'2". Okay. I'm good there. Okay. I'm good there. With shoes on, I'm 6'2", 6'1", without. Okay. 
Um, what is your opinion on people who say that women basketball is boring? They're boring. <laughs> Good women. I like that. Like, they're just they're just racist and lame. They wanna or not racist, but it's probably racist too for real. But just to be sexist yeah. and lame because mm -hmm. like what's the basis for saying it's boring? It's not like a game can be boring, sure, but I've seen plenty of boring NBA games. Yeah. Plenty of boring golf matches, plenty of boring yeah. any sport. You know, so yeah. it depends on the depends on the match. Yeah. But I feel like women's basketball I always thought it was interesting to watch. Yeah. Same. I feel like we really got to know how to play. Like you, we can't just like do the dunks. We not as super fast. Like we got to really build our bodies and our skills as yeah. well to do to perform. So if you want to see real basketball, women's sport. <laughs> women's basketball is real tough. Do you uh, feel like women should be paid more? Period. I don't. Well, why would we not be paid the same as a man? Does make sense to me? What about the people who says because we don't get? Uh, I see a lot of things when I be seeing these debates. I see a lot of people that be like. Um, y'all don't even have fans. Like, no one comes to you guys' games. There's like, so many fans. It's just also, like, you get College, money. for sure, though. I don't really... But I don't see a lot of FW... I have been lately, though. I have been lately, though. But when I was seeing these questions, I really didn't Well, see it's been either. going, like, up a lot more, um, increasing viewership. Mm -hmm. Um, and even the coverage of the games. Because, I mean, if you don't cover it, how can you be a fan of something you can't watch? Good for me. So, just increasing that kind of stuff increases fan bases, but it's also gone up, especially these past few years, mm -hmm. just social media and women's sports gaining increased in popularity. Yeah. So, I mean, even in the end, like before, why would you not pay them just as much? Because, yeah. what? I mean, there are people, then it's like, they're just putting more money instead of into the NBA is the reason they're able to get so much more out of it. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. What I don't understand is like how we have like all these different countries with all these different um, women's teams that can pay like lots of money and whatever, but we don't have it at home, which we have lots of money in America. I know. And people that Again, can sponsor because stuff. people aren't allocating the money for it. The money is there, it's just being put into something else. They need to change that. So then it's like there's money that's not there anymore because of the yeah. fact that you're allocating it for other endeavors. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, Mickey, that was all the questions that I have for you today. I want to thank you so much for joining Just at the Press today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for being patient, too. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> all right, you guys. Uh, tune in next time to see who my next special guest is. Mickey, I wish you nothing but um, success this season. I hope you reach all your goals and you keep balling like you're doing right now. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, Mom. All right, and we out. Thanks, Mick.